Uh, this first research field has not been promising either, I'll tell you about that a bit later. Um, so, word games, lexical organisation, we're thinking about links uh, in the mind between words. Here's one for you, plane, breathe, balloon, produces a word beginning A and two letters. Easy one, isn't it? Good, next one. Change, adult, old. B-E. Yes? Become. That's right. Very good. Eh? Become. Wind, candle, whistle. You think that's much easier? It's funny to notice how, how much harder this one, this one was, the early one. Sail, water, ship. Up, glass, fast. Yes, break. Well, I think it's breakfast, is he? Okay, ball, cold, fish. Catch it is, yes, catch. Religion, priest, building. Church, so someone's very good. It's interesting, um, uh, some native speakers are better than others at this, and uh, I wonder why. Uh, obviously it's not to do with language proficiency if uh, native speakers perform differently. Right, anyway, back to the research. Have a look at this. Um, I'm going to describe a metaphor. Do you understand metaphor? A metaphor for language learning. Uh, we, what we have is uh, a network. All these points are nodes. These are lexical items, they're words, and the lines between them, they are links between the words. And this is how I visualize or conceptualize the mental lexicon. Okay, so learning a language is developing a network of links between new words. In the core, you've got the most common words that you use, the highly frequent words, and they've got very um, highly developed links between them. Probably you've got um, these nodes on the outer reaches are new words that you're learning and uh, they don't have many links to them, they're just in the process of being linked in. So with this metaphor, learning a new word is not just learning a new word, it is um, integrating these new words into the existing lexicon and uh, growing like this. Um, so, take this metaphor to nature, okay, looking for things in nature. This is a normal spider web, beautifully crafted, uh, lots of um, links, if you like. In the 1960s, there was an American researcher who experimented with spiders, and he gave the spiders, um, he gave the spiders different kinds of drugs, and noticed what kind of... Uh, webs they made. They had one which was uh, caffeine. This is what happens to a spider who's had a bit of coffee. The networks are disrupted. This one is speed. This is marijuana which is done really well. It's just the top bit, you know, like I said, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, Sleeping pill is really just, they've just drawn a couple of things and then fallen off. Okay, so this is my alternative uh, L2 proficiency donut. So these skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing, they, they act on a lexical networks which are at the core of our language learning system. I put grammar in here just in case anybody's going to get angry and put up their hand and say, what about grammar? I put it here. It used to be a bit larger. I've made it smaller for this presentation because my opinion has changed. Okay. So, what have we got? Oh, by the way, talking about vocabulary and grammar, uh, vocabulary mistakes are usually more serious than grammar mistakes. Uh, just in case I have any doubters here, any grammar fans, get ready for this. 
So when Kentucky Fried Chicken opened some restaurants in China, they translated their slogan, what's this word? Finger licking good into Chinese. It came out as professional translators in China. <laughs> this is, I call this a vocabulary problem. It's not a grammar problem. Uh, anyway, back to word association. So word webs and language learning. So the network of words in our brains lose power when we stop using a language for a long time, e.g. University vacations. I don't know, students here, teachers here, after two months they come back after a holiday. But my students, anyway, their level of English has gone right down. And uh, the reason is because the network is not being used for a long time. So the links between the words are becoming a bit fuzzy, losing dynamism, losing quality even, definitely losing energy. Also, they lose power when we get old. If you ever speak to an old people, an old person, even in their first language, around about age 80, 90, you notice that their speech is not um, what it used to be. We can explain this using our metaphor of word webs. But you have a very good chance of acquiring a large English vocabulary if you're a student and if you don't drink too much coffee, okay? Ah, there's one other dimension to lexical competence which I wanted to talk about. Um, I talked about size, the number of words you know, and the organization, the links. Also about word recognition. Uh, some people say this is a dimension of competence in an L2. And uh, how good are you at it? Recognizing a word that's um, seeing, also hearing. <coughs> Pardon me. So, Find a five-letter word in this string. Are you ready? I'll give you a short time. You're going to see a string of letters and there'll be a five-letter word in there. Ready, go. Oh, you're pretty good, aren't you? I have to go faster. Ready? You're too good. I have to go even faster than that. How can I do the next one? Okay, word recognition three. There is. Oh, nice. <laughs> a friend of mine did some research into this and found that lower level learners, their word recognition ability is lower than higher level learners. And that may be a factor in lexical competence. And I wanted to talk about it anyway. We've got large. Okay. So, anyway, word association is interesting because. Knowing a word's association is supposed to be an aspect of word knowledge, according to Richards in 1976. Also, Nation. Have you heard of Paul Nation? He's uh, the, the number one most famous researcher in L2 vocabulary, from very good speaker too, from New Zealand originally. So, um, and gains in L2 proficiency have been assumed to be measurable by the number and type and strengths of associations produced, according to those researchers. Uh, but one particular research I was interested in by Cruz Pankers Sharwood Smith compared scores on a word association test with proficiency, and they concluded, well, you can um, contrary to the expectations raised by earlier studies, we find that word association tests do not show much promise for the specific role created for them in L2 research. I spent the last six years um, checking to see if this is true or not, and I'll tell you about it. Um, in their research, they used um, <coughs> computer software where they display the keywords here, that's all the stimulus and you type your response into here. Uh, while you're typing, the timer stops. You get um, 30 seconds per Q word. This is a Q word. You've got 30, minute, 30 seconds to type and enter as many responses as you can, up to 12. Okay, this is the tool. We're using this tool over and over again for the last six years. Had lots of fun. You put a whole series of Q words in, and um, the subject will work on it, type in lots of associations, and you get them on a 
text file at the end. So uh, anyway, the conclusions of the 1987 experiment of Cruz, they said there is no difference between native and non-native speaker performance, and therefore no link between word association test performance and proficiency, and therefore uh, organization is not part of lexical competence, according to their research. And they found the highest correlation between proficiency scores, those are the um, language tests, and uh, word association test results was of the number of responses, not the quality. And a test retest, they showed that uh, non-native word association test performance is random. Um, uh, a subject will take a test one week, and two weeks later do the test again. Completely different performance, they said. And they said word association is just for measuring socio-cultural knowledge, not part of lexical knowledge at all, they concluded. So I did this test again. I made my own test. And uh, it's called a multiple response test because you can enter up to 12 responses to one keyword. And I'm going to talk about the method, the results, and some qualitative analysis, and some conclusions. I got some research questions. Uh, do na non-native speakers, uh, sorry, do native speakers outperform non-native speakers? Uh, the earlier research said it's just about the same. And uh, is there a significant positive relationship between learner WAT scores and standard proficiency tests? Are test retest results reliable? And, um, well, why would learner um, did, what, uh, performance be related to L2 proficiency anyway? So, the instructions for the test, which I do with the software, are like this. When you see a he or hear a word, it makes you think of another word. And you type in as many single English words as possible, up to 12 in response to each of 20 keywords. And there are no right or wrong answers. You type in just whatever the keyword makes you think of. Do not worry about spelling mistakes, but avoid proper nouns and avoid entering responses of more than one word. Avoid chaining away from the keyword. Chaining is when uh, you, if the keyword is cat, that your response is mouse, you might put your next response as cheese and then cake. You've got to focus on the Q word, which would be cat, for example, and focus on that and don't chain away. So for the Q selection, I selected Qs which um, well, I tried to avoid these stimulus words that were likely to be confused with a similar sounding word in L1 Japanese here. And I avoided difficult words. I wanted words that were known to all the subjects taking the test. I wanted to avoid words which produce the dominant primary response, like king and queen, man and woman. And I also avoided responses that were very highly predictable, like fruit and apple. It's quite tough to do this, I tell you. And I wanted to avoid Cues that elicited proper nouns, like city elicits names of cities, or river, you get names of rivers. So the scoring system for the test, there's a number of response measure. You just count the number of responses a subject enters. And also there's a stereotypy measure where you measure the responses against the enormous list of native speaker responses. I got a 114 native speakers to um, provide word association responses, and I made a big list. And so if, if, uh, if you produce a response that's on their list, you get one point 